the, the, the insight of that is rejection is not a failure. It's feedback. Instead of seeing rejection as a reflection of your worth, view as an opportunity to learn and grow. All we have to do is lean. Find the things that you, that you like. Find those things that are calling to you. You don't have to know all about it. Lean towards it. Just, just, just start reaching towards it. And the gravity and momentum of life is going to pull you. That's what I would recommend is to realize that each of us deserves the kind of kindness and love that we give to other people. And we have to stop and ask ourselves, how come we don't treat ourselves with that same type of love and care? Because even in this thing we're talking about rejection, your response to the rejection is a choice. You are choosing to allow that rejection to have you respond in whatever way. You I think we've all been there at some level and in some way. I know I've definitely felt the sting of rejection and uh, it's not a happy place. But from those episodes and experiences in life, that's where I've really been able to develop my resilience and become stronger. And that's what we want to talk about today is how to take when rejection happens and actually turn that into a triumph to make it a strength and to learn to shift your mindset when the rejection happens. It's leading you to something even better. I brought this to the table because I think it's a very common thing that we all have to deal with, uh, whether it's that job you applied for, the promotion you applied for, a social thing, dating, and someone rejects you. So the question is, or how do we manage and navigate our way through that? When we talk about rejection, what emotions does that immediately bring to the surface for you? From my personal experience and from what I've witnessed with other people, it's really a grief. Um, yeah. Grief, grief and sadness. Sometimes um, it's even when you really don't want the thing or the person who is doing the rejecting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't necessarily even have to want the situation or the person or the, or uh, just uh, the whole embrace, but you still feel, you know, a person can still feel grief. Feel grief, absolutely. I agree with you on that. Chris, what are your thoughts on that? What are the emotions that you feel are kind of tied to that that has been your experience? Um, my old experiences? My old experiences <laughs> would be I, there would be a few things involved. Um, I would look at that as the initial um, foray into conflict. Um, the other piece would be, it would play into my insecurities. Mm -hmm. um, it would play into, and, and going deeper into that one, it would play into the fact that I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. which are three pretty big ones in themselves because there's just so many layers within those three aspects, it can turn into a little bit of a rabbit hole if you don't get a hold of it quick. Sean, what about you? When you talk about rejection and your experiences with it in life, what are the emotions that that has kind of generated for you over the years? Well, rejection always is one of the most, you know, personal of the emotions that we feel because we immediately um, cling to it and assign it to mm -hmm. ourselves, you know, some of our other emotions, you know, they kind of are in a bit of a sphere where they're a little bit more external, but rejection is one of those ones we take extremely personal. Um, and because we assign so much of our own person to it, you know, it often becomes part of our personality and we take on, you know, a wounded persona. Um, and we see that um, every day um, and it contributes to a lot of the dysfunction and um, mental anguish and anxiety and depression that people are dealing with because they're taking on things that were never were meant for them to take on and rejection is, uh, is, is a big one. Um, and we just have to understand that rejection isn't about you and most things aren't about you. So we should, uh, shouldn't be trying to take on those things that don't belong to us. Uh, leave other people's baggage at the door uh, is a saying that I've heard before. So, uh, just, and we just need to understand that rejection is one of those things that we're the, the only ones allowing ourselves to be rejected. Someone can leave, a job can pass us by, but just like a train going by that you weren't meant to be on, it's just fine. You weren't rejected by the train. It's not your train. It's, it's okay. And we need to let uh, rejection abide with the person or um, ev 
event that is passing us by for something bigger because there's always something bigger on the way for you. And we need to understand that if something goes past you, that means it just wasn't big enough and just be ready for the big thing. One other, one other thing I want to add, it, it, it also feeds the victim mentality. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. You know, there, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a craving loop that mechanism in the brain, you know, that's feeding, you know, that behavior, you know, you, you have the initial trauma and then um, you get to, you know, being so acquainted with that trauma that you just, you know, imbibe it like a glass of wine and it just becomes your drug of choice. Um, and, you know, people crave it, you know, that, that victimhood, finding people to grieve with that you don't know, you know, reaching out. Are, are you OK? Sometimes that, hey, are you OK? Check in is someone that is, you know, a type of an energy vampire that is trying to find something that is feeding that victimhood in them and they need your energy in order to fulfill that victimhood that they're that they're feeling when they can no longer create it in their own lives and but that's typically what we'll do is we'll make sure we feel victimized in our own neighborhood we can't find a man we can't find a job oh my goodness nothing and we start to look for other people birds of a feather that flock together and we all sit there and commiserate you know it's the commiseration crew and, you know, I find myself trying to steer very far of that, that crew. And you see it oftentimes when it pops up into it in a rejection. Oh, I didn't get that promotion. And it's a downhill spiral that never ends until they decide to, to let it go. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. It, it, it is very dangerous. And, you know, so let's, let's review some of the words that we have put on the table because I, I really want to, that's why I started with this. Uh, we heard things like, you know, the war is we, not just me and the war is we group, you know, oh, the world and whatever else is not fair. The trauma associated with it, right? And, you know, in the world today, we hear a lot about PTSD and different things like that, which is a form of trauma. Yes. So it, it can have those types of impacts. Uh, victim or victimhood or playing the victim role is another one that was tossed out there. And then also just feeling wounded. I mean, literally like, you know, somebody... Uh, to the knife out and cut you kind of thing. You, you feel that type of impact. So the key is this, I think, and for me, I've had some of the same things and emotionally, you know, it, it's where I think it really has the greatest impact for me is like, so from an emotional standpoint, it is that sense of, as Chris talked about feeling, you know, not good enough, not worthy, that, that type piece of it. But the reactive piece of it for me is the, backing off to that corner and not being willing to risk getting rejected again so you don't advance you don't try you don't keep pushing forward and that is if there is a behavior that i really want us to focus in on today i think that's the key component is how to pick yourself up get past the emotional blocks that have been placed there and move on and keep moving on and keep moving on so how do we do that? The thing I see most often is that people don't make a different choice. They just keep making the same choices just in another mm -hmm. body. Or mm -hmm. if it's a job, really the same. They run into the same thing because people keep running into themselves. Um, they don't choose anything differently because they keep running into the same person just in a different form or the same job or same environment, just a different location. So that's what I see um, most often. And if you say personally, like what do I do personally? Very similar, I'm, I'm, I speak from experience. That's what I've done, pretty much the same uh, person most of my life, maybe different formats, maybe different cities, but the same, the same person, um, just different ages. <laughs> I think that's what people say just different ages. And that's yeah. not that's not uncommon until someone decides that they want to choose differently. But the, mm. the danger is that you can believe that you're choosing differently only to find out that either one, you have not choose, chosen differently. It's just a different outfit, different, different persona. Um, but it's really the same. Or um you realize that, well, 
there's a whole bunch of shit that comes with this person too. So I might as well just deal with the assholes that I'm used to. <laughs> so I guess old people would say, give what you want. Cause no matter what you do is going to have, there's going to be an issue. There's going to be a problem. So first you have to know what you want and then hope that you're at the place where it's healthy to begin with. But how do you just pick yourself up and what do people do to get out of that space? Most of the time people don't, to be quite frank, they don't. And then when they feel like they're at a wall, then they just give up and they find other things that bring them joy. Um, but most people don't want to do the work because it's traumatizing to have to face why we make decisions that we make, why we select certain jobs, why we select certain people to surround ourselves with, whether or not they're healthy for us. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's very traumatic to even have those types of thoughts to get the healing. I saw a video the other day that said, you know, do you really want to heal? Do you really want to get better? Because if you really wanted to get better, then you do it. It's really that simple. You do it. But because getting better is not that simple <laughs> or it, 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 a person would have to face things and admit things, not necessarily about the other person, but about themselves, it, because people would have to do that. Most people don't bother. I, I heard Erica say something about, you know, wanting uh, the, making change uh, along those lines. You just do. I, I'm. I'm going to respectfully push back a little bit, Erica, just a little bit, um, because I think some what I've just learned, this is some stuff I just learned. Um, you have to have the mechanisms to be able to make those changes. And it, I think we all want to get better in our heart of hearts. I think each one of us wants to get better. I don't think there's a person you could if we did it. We went out on the street and started polling people. I don't think anybody would say, oh, no, I don't want to get better if they're if they're even being remotely honest about it. But here's the here's where the, the the flip side of this: Do you possess the tools and the the gravitas to be able to to step forward and become very vulnerable? Now Brian knows. I just went to a seminar two weekends ago that was just I felt like I got my wig my wig pulled back, um, and it literally ultimately what I came out of that was with, with a I identified some of my trauma that I had been basically kicking the can down the road for freaking decades. And I, now all of a sudden I got these tools to be able to actually process through. Cause I'm telling you, somewhere along the line in my life, I went from being the, having the courage of a blind gunfighter to being that person that I was so, so risk averse. Um, even with my goal setting, you know, you set those safe goals, but um, it's approach. You know, what is your approach every time you get rejected? Do you do you instantly you I, mean, I think most people instantly fall back a little bit. But when you fall back, do you literally fall forward? And I think a lot of us don't have that that resiliency piece or we haven't built that resiliency pieces into it. And what it what it requires is, is you to reframe the rejection. So when I say reframe the rejection, I mean, the, the, the insight of that is rejection is not a failure. It's feedback. Instead of seeing rejection as a reflection of your worth, view as an opportunity to learn and grow, you know, and you have to practice these, you know, there's tools you have to practice to be able to do, even to be able to say that you have to have some tools that you kind of, you have to put into your toolbox and be able to work for the other thing is for me is, you know, we and instantly when we like, let's, let's just use a from a, a job or a relationship. So you get rejected on a job, or you get you know re, rejected in a relationship. The the first thing is instead of saying I wasn't good enough, tr try to say this is a chance for me to to refine my approach, grow some, work on the things that I actually know I'm not great at, or I know that are, are some of my shortcomings, and really kind of put yourself in a position to to do to affect change within oneself you get on something that's talking about rejection is feedback and we'll come back to that too because i think that's a key piece of it uh accepting and understanding and then what to do with the feedback because there are some tools and techniques that i think are very valuable in that space 
I love how we've come down to the conversation from some big uh, theoretical uh, ways to affect change in our lives that Erica provided to some more practical things that, you know, Chris suggested. And, you know, one thing that when I'm, I'm talking to people, I always like to provide really practical, you know, easily accessible um, avenues in, into change, because I find that a lot of people are on the outside of change, kind of double dutching. Um, I want to I want to change. I just I just don't know, you know, how to how to do that. Where, where's my 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 toehold? You know, how do I make that, you know, that lean and. You know, I, I love Steve Harvey, um, and he was really a key in me getting, you know, my start down my own path of self-discovery and, and betterment. And I would listen to him every morning. As soon as, as, soon as my feet hit the floor, I had the headphones in because I didn't want anything else to enter my brain first thing in the morning. It had to be Steve, something Steve Harvey positive, or as I grew my catalog, something that was um, really... Um, inspirational, but it had to be that heavy, heavy Eric Thomas inspiration for a while there to, you know, give me that, you know, that kick in the pants that we need. But I also realized as, as I kept going that there became a time that you had to take that, that kick and capture the energy while it's going and, and move with it and stop just getting that, that dopamine rush, you know, cause a lot of people are there. They're listening they're, now I'm listening to the, getting the messaging but now it's just, oh, I just like the feel of, you know, I love the energy of Eric Thomas and I, I like it, you know, and we start getting that and we forget, you know, we've taken our eyes off the prize. We've turned it to a pillar of salt, you know, looking back and we're caught looking at what we've already passed. We've, we've, we've jumped that hurdle already, right? Just capturing your attention is the very first thing you have to do. And so we've captured our attention and said, I've identified something that's wrong and I'm taking a hard left turn. And so we, now that we've captured our attention, now, holding the attention is the next step. So um, as we're making the steps, we have to stop focusing on the step itself and the mechanism that you used on that step, but now use that step to go on to the next one. So thank, thanks, Eric. You know, thank you, you know, to all the greats that I'm listening to to get me on, start that momentum. Now I've got it. Now I have to keep going. Um, and so Steve gets into a, a thing he calls the jump. I think we're all familiar about Steve Harvey's jump. Right. And so that's the, it, it's it's right in there that we have a bit of an issue, Steve, you know, because in my opinion, I, I, I don't think um, it takes that much. You know, I don't think it takes a jump because to jump, you need two things. You need a firm foundation to jump from and firm footing to land upon. And the whole purpose at that point in your life is you are not certain of those things. That's what you're scared of. You're like, I don't know what's down there. So you've already set yourself up for failure by using this jumping. So, you know, what I found is um, th this is saying, in which direction does a tree fall, right? Mm -hmm. And they say a tree fall in the direction that it's leaning, just leaning. A tree falls in the direction that it's leaning. And see, a tree falls under certain conditions as well. Got a soil issue, mm -hmm. soil uh, uh, is eroding, soil erosion. The tree could just be dying, you know, could be old, mm -hmm. or it could just be beaten in the winds, winds of time, winds of change, right? And see, that we can all kind of gravitate to one of those. We've all felt that. We felt like we've, you know, we wouldn't be here if we hadn't felt um, at our core that we have weathered some storms in our lives. I think we can all agree to that. That's why we're here. We're all here as testimony that, yeah, I'm a tree. I'm bloodied, but unbound, bent, but not broken. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can, we can, mm -hmm. we can get with that. So, so all we had to do is lean, find the things that you, that you like and that, that, that call to you that Erica is saying, find those things that are calling to you. You don't have to know all about it. Lean towards it. Just, just, just start reaching towards it. And the gravity and momentum of life is going to pull you down to the ground. But you got to make sure that you hit the ground running. So find the things that you like and just, and just lean for them. You know, a, a year or so ago, um, and Brian knows this, I said, man, I've been going through my journey. And uh, Will Smith says, you know, the thing that your gift is the thing you do best. I think that's how he praises it. 
the thing that you do best. And I realized through my own self-discovery that talking is the thing that I do best. I've never met a stranger. Everyone that knows me knows this. So that, that's the thing I said, Brian, I really want to start podcasting. I think that's, I think that's my thing that, that I'm being called to do. I don't know anything about it. I just start listening, but it's, it's really a thing that I can get down with. And so, you know what I did? I went, um, I started researching um, podcast setup. I put it on my, uh, on my vision board um, two years in a row. So I know it was a, that it took that kind of a cycle. So two years in a row, I put, um, you know, visioning of, of, a, of, a, of a studio. I researched microphones. I listened to, to podcast about podcasting. You know, <laughs> I went on Amazon and I, you know, I ordered, you know, a, a mic stand. Now I, I couldn't afford the microphone. Okay. I could afford the mic stand. Everything else is in a cart but I leaned. I did not know that one of my best cousins in the world has this amazing, you know, podcast and this amazing uh, platform that he allows me to be on. And what am I doing guys? I'm doing the thing that I said I wanted to do by simply leaning towards that goal. And I've let the momentum bring me here today. And I said, Brian, I have to get on this, this podcast on Saturday because I have something I have to say. You know, I said, man, I, I thought I had a, a, something going on. And he said, we'll just move it around and be flexible. But I just, I had to come on today to share that because, guys, all we have to do, just lean towards, towards that. That's how we take that tragedy to triumph, you know, championship, um, make a championship run. And it starts with just a simple lean. And we have to understand that. Don't, don't jump. Just lean towards it. Find a thing you want. And I, I think of the little E.T. finger going, you know, trying to touch it, reach for it like you're reaching for the moon in the sky. Sometimes I do that on full moon nights, just reach and feel yourself, you know, you know, in your in your real time and space, reaching those things that are bigger than you. Like Brian said, reach for those goals that are beyond you, because if you keep reaching for those goals that are beyond you, you're going to fall your way right into them. The key piece to that, too, is, as we talked about before, uh, with setting goals and then dealing with change and the discomfort of change. That I think is where people really get stuck mentally and emotionally is that fear of change and, and feeling like it is this massive leap that they have to take. But as you just phrased it, don't, you don't have to take a, a massive leap, just start to lean and then let the natural currents, the momentum, the gentle breeze at your back, back whatever it might be, slowly push you in that direction and that's that at least opens the door and here's what i want to go back to because I, I, i've been making a ton of notes over here so there's several things that i want to go back to i want to go first back to uh what erica brought up and chris i haven't forgot about you sir so hang on uh the she's she mentioned choice and choosing you know having the ability to choose and if there is a thing and, and, and <coughs> the grandest level that I think we as human beings have the most control over. It is choice that I think impacts everything, all things that is the, that is the stopper for us. What choices do we make? Right. But what drives the choice you make is the bigger key, right? And that goes back to what Chris was talking about, about what tools do you have? What are the things that you are using within yourself? What have you built up to strengthen this skill, that skill, this ability to help you make and assess and get to the better choices for yourself? Because that's, that's the key component. Because even in this thing we're talking about rejection, your response to the rejection is a choice. You are choosing to allow that rejection to have you respond in whatever way you're having that response come out, right? Now, that's at a very high level, but that is truly the root of it. So I think choice is one of the key things that we need to take a look at. That boils then down to, I think, what mindset. Where is your mindset? What's your mindset around you, the world, the, your job, your friends, your career, all these different things? What mindset are you approaching this from? And how is that impacting the choices that you're making, right? And the other part I think we get stuck in is we always would prefer or even want, or some, some of us even need to feel like we're right or it's going to be safe. Or as Chris said, 
risk aversion, right? We don't want, I don't want to make that choice because that's risky. I don't want to do this because that's risky, right? But time is short and we, we need to, as, as Sean said, lean forward, push forward and take those risks, set those, as Chris talks about it now, and I'm sure he'll bring it up today, these audacious goals, you know, just over the top type stuff, right? Um, you need to do those things. Another thing that I made a note on here is where we get stuck is talk versus do. Because we can talk. I want to do this. I feel like I know I need to do this. And this is where I need to go. And this is my plan. And, you know, so writing it all out, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying don't do those things because all, all of that is the foundational pieces of it. But it's the do piece of it. It's the action. It's the leaning forward. It's the taking the step. It's the jumping out of the airplane. It's what, whatever you want to use. That is where the difference starts to happen, right? The planning is good, but the doing is the most important piece. Let's talk about um, putting in the work, because I think that's one of the things that you came out of this seminar realizing that you have to put in the work. It's not just the talk, it's the doing piece of it, as I just said. So what are some of the things that you have realized for yourself now that you now need to start to quote unquote, do the work to be able to start moving yourself forward? Well, I think it, it, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of pieces and parts to this. Um, one of the thing is, um, you know, I've got some, I, I, what I discovered about myself is, you know, I have this skill of, I, I talk well in, in most instances. So, and, and so a lot of times I, I let my talking do the, do the work and it gets me through and, and it, it has allowed me to not always do the, to have to not always do the research and put in the legwork and really put and really, uh, I, I st my new thing now is the reps. I start talking about the reps, you know, I'm, you know, we golf, you and I golf. Um, so it's, it's it, a lot of it's sports based thought process that I have. And I, I realized that um, what's, I realized more importantly, some, what some of my Achilles were, some of my, um, my less than desirable traits, um, my disinterest in certain things that if I didn't see a payoff, you know, sometimes you can't see a payoff for something until you truly get into it, until you truly you know, decide you're going to risk even your time, you know what I mean? Um, making yourself vulnerable, all these other things. Those are some absolutely wonderful um, things that if you do them, the rewards are just amazing on the other side. Um, and just being honest. I mean, you know, we all, you, you said something earlier about that need to be right. Um, and I realize I suffer from that. Uh, I have suffered from it a good portion of time. Because uh, and that's in and around the, the that impost that imposter syndrome. So you always want to be the you know I want to be the authority. You know I was talking to uh, some of the parents last night, and I was and I and I was very apologetic coming into it. I was like, hey, you know I want to give you guys a little bit of game on how to deal with your young folks. You know you're you're now young adults, and I said um, the thing that I hated when I was growing up was that. My mother talked at me. She didn't talk to me, as opposed to my grandmother who talked to me. Consequently, she got a lot out of me. And I tend to, when people, you know, you can tell when people are talking at you versus to you. Um, and it's really kind of a turnoff for me. It's a big turnoff. But the difference is today is that I don't, you know, depending on the situation, I don't allow that to really slow me down. You know, I mean, I can rec there's a mech. I have a mechanism now that recognizes that. And depending on the situation, obviously, I can't necessarily give you specifics, but I try to get to the point where we're having an actual conversation. You know, I, hopefully we can talk about this, um, but you redirect. For me, it's redirecting it to an to a manner that is a little more a acceptable to me and, and be a little more conducive to furthering the action or the agenda or the desired goal, things that are along that lines. Because what happens is we tend to go back to the trauma of our youth when that happens. When I figure out somebody's talking at me, 
for one, it pisses me off. Um, and then secondly, it's kind of put it, my walls all of a sudden start to come up. Right. And then we're, so then we're behind the wall shooting. You know what I mean? I want to, you know, I'm coming at you know, I'm trying to come at you because I'm trying to match shot for shot. It's not about matching shot for shot. It's really about zeroing in, um, on what the goal and objective is, where you want to be, what you'd like to see. Um, and, and for me, it's all about positivity. So I'm, I'm really trying to get back to a positive place because I hate the negative. I mean, I just really do. Um, and the more and more I think about it and the more and more I'm more readily um, inclined to, to literally state that, you know, you, you, you have a, for me as a, as, as a human being, as an adult, we have an innate right to say what our likes and dislikes are. Now, I think you need to, I think in, in most cases you want to be civil about it if, if, if you can, but the reality is I used to, cause that, what that also, so let's back it up for a second. That takes us back to conflict, rejection, all they, they, so, they so interconnect to each. I mean, they're just, it's like a wagon. They're just, pull, they're just pulling each other up and down the tracks, you know? So, uh, I've really started to zero in on that and really say, okay, what's, what's the part that I play in this? You know, what, how, what's the part you play in your growth or lack thereof, your ability to uh, take the rejection and literally turn it around. And I think we are conditioned. I'm learning about myself. I'm conditioned to, my conditioning, my original conditioning was to just take it on the chin, shut my mouth, tuck my tail between my legs and kind of slink off. And now I'm like, no, we're not doing all that because the damage is so great when you allow that to happen to you, when you allow that action to, to be the kind of the final stanza per se for a particular scene in your life, as opposed to addressing it. Um, and, and, and honestly, it's not always about addressing it. Now, certain situations you want to address it immediately and other situations you want to take it in, process it and then address it. And I think that's on the lines of those personal relationships, that, that type of stuff. And it depends on the, like I said, it really depends on what the action is, you know, cause you, you, you I, I can't say, well, on this one, you do this on that one, you do this. It's into there's an intuitive piece that kicks kicks in and you've got to be smart enough to say, let me take a look at the, let me do a snapshot, uh, look at the landscape landscape again, and let's figure out a course of action. Sean, I see your head bobbing up and down over there. What do you want to add on top of kind of where Chris left that? Oh man, I I just I loved everything about where, where Chris is going, you know, in, in his commentary. You know, for, how, you know, for me. You know, rejection is the rubber band in the slingshot that is going to propel you forward. You know, um, we look at what we are being rejected from. These are things that we have taken very, very close to heart. That These are things that have gone from mere a point of attraction to I see myself with that person or I see myself with that job. And when you don't get that job or that person, we feel lost and we're sitting here holding on you know, instead of letting go and letting ourselves be catapulted forward, you know, that rejection has gotten us so t wound up here so that we have all this energy ready to blast it forward because you know what's going to happen. That next girlfriend or boyfriend, what's the one thing you're going to make sure of? You're going to make sure that they are the best, the baddest, you know, person that, that you can find. We know this to be true because we see it in our everyday lives. But we don't recognize it when it comes to things like jobs um, and, and rejections of that nature, right? We need to understand that these are principles of nature. These are laws, right? Like the law of attraction, law of assumption, right? The further you pull this direction, you know, the further you're, you're going to go forward. So we have to be strong enough to let go when we feel that. Because challengers are, on, are, are one of two things. Only because we talked about choice, Brian. You know, he said we talked about choice. Choice is it's two things. That issue that is negative and you're feeling something about it, you're feeling some, you know, some pushback. It's either a wall telling you turn around 
go the other way, or it's a door that you need to open. It can only, it can't be anything else. That is, dude, it's physics, guys. I don't know. I, I can't tell you. But if you put a put a piece of plywood in front of you, it can it can turn into, you know, a door, or it's a wall that's telling you to go a different direction. You know, we forget about these 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 core concepts. I play with my kids, right? I do it, and I've learned how to re reinstall my imagination. It's a very interesting thing, but you don't realize that you've lost it until you play with kids. So if you think about just that way in a very real sense, think about, a, 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 you know, when you're playing with a kid, you give them a, a piece of paper, you give them, they can turn it into anything, right, with, with their mind. So that challenge that we see is the same thing. It's only a door, it's only a door or a wall that needs, you need to turn around away from. So just try it. Reach towards it and fill it. If you've been running into the same thing for the last five years, it's pretty clear that's a wall. Okay? That's what, you know, Erica's saying, you keep making the same same mistake over and over again. You're turning into the same person over and over again. You're meeting the same people. You're going out with the same people. Though the facade changes, the city changes, but the interaction stays the same. That is your universe telling you, ma'am, sir, ma'am, that is a door. That's not a door. Go the other way. That's not the kind of guy that you need to date, right? That's not the situation that best utilizes your skill set. You're bigger than that. You know, we have imposter syndrome. I'm just going to take this little clerical job because I, I don't really feel deep down that I can take this, this directorship, right? I don't feel I'm, I'm worthy enough to go be the manager. So I'll just, you know, I can work behind the desk because a job is just a job. But we have to shoot higher, shoot higher and don't allow rejection to be the thing, you know, blocking us from that. Let go of that baggage and let yourself ascend forward. You know, I, I use the term trust is to thrust. Trust in yourself that you've, you've done the work, you know, you're ready. Let go, be great. If it's familiar to you, that it's the wrong thing. Because it's the familiar things that have got you to this point right now. You want to turn the other way towards things that I, I don't know how to golf. I don't play pickleball. I, I don't read the Tao Te Ching. I, 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 don't, I don't know poetry. I don't listen to classical music. I just start knocking off things that are unfamiliar. And you'll find your way. It's feeling your way in the dark because when you're feeling your way in the dark, you are feeling through something that's unfamiliar for the familiar. So start finding those things. Take another language class. Take, just start inciting your mind. Read something that you've never read before. Listen to something you've never listened to before. If you listen to hip hop, listen to jazz. Samara Joy, I love her. Start, start challenging your mind to other things. Look at everything that you do. If you drive to work the same way, try another route. You know, if you manage your finances the same way every month, try another route. I'm still challenged with this. It's telling you that that's not the way to spend money. You don't get your check and go to the mall. Right? You're being told something. So if you find yourself on a rabbit wheel, the way off the rabbit wheel is to get off the rabbit wheel and go another direction. If it looks familiar, it's probably wrong. Go the other way. Turn around. Yep. And that, and that is the essence of growth, right? Because you you can't grow and be stagnant at the same time. So we talk about relationships within that seminar quite a bit, just relationships in general, and either they're growing or decaying. So hopefully what you're trying to do with all your relationships is continue to work and have them grow and evolve and not allow them to decay because they can't just become stagnant. That's not how relationships work. So as a, and that same principle and approach can be kind of applied as Sean is referring to. It's just life in general. Either it's decaying or you're growing it. And that those are the two sides of the coin. A lot of what I've experienced and what I've witnessed in other people has to do with things that are really neurological. Mm-hmm. We have to take some time and understand the way our own brain works. What gives us this high? What gives us a rush? What makes us um, feel... Um, disconnected or what makes us feel connected and really we have to take time out to have the relationship with ourselves to understand the way our own minds work in different situations 
um, one to, to understand what's happening and then to do a little bit deeper to figure out why does this feel this way or why is this happening? And then when we come into contact with others in other situations, then we'll be able to recognize what's going on in our own head, what's going on in our own brain and why we react a certain way, why we feel a certain way. Um, even, you know, with rejection, sometimes a, a position or a person could appear to be rejecting um, us, but really what they're recognizing is that it's not the right, um, it's not good for us, and that it's not optimizing our best um, our best. So what is really can be called a rejection really can be a blessing and an elevation because it's pushing you, you know, forward or pushing you to where you're supposed to be. And then sometimes people know a lot more about a situation than what we know. And we're willing to settle for something, some position, some person, but maybe that position or that person knows a lot more details than we do. What we call a rejection oftentimes is not a rejection. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're so, so, so true about that. And again, a lot of it is wrapped up in our own perception of certain things going. It is like Chris was talking about the baggage we bring into it is where the challenge comes from, right? Because we, we bring so much preconceived stuff into this exchange. Um, and that's what we're filtering it all through, right? As we, as we go through the process versus just coming in, having more of an open mind and an open posture and open stance mm -hmm. and being willing to just go for the ride mm -hmm. versus trying to bring this all, all this baggage in, dictate the outcome and mm -hmm. you, you're predicting this. And I'm going to, like Chris was talking about, a bit behind the wall now, mm -hmm. lobbing grenades over. That's not the position that you want to put yourself into. And I think we're a lot of people, we really can get guilty of doing that to ourselves in these different mm -hmm. situations. But Eric, I want to thank you for the segue because the next thing I wanted to talk about is exactly where you went. And that's talking about figuring out what your why is. You know, why do you want whatever it is that we're, you are uh, trying to attain or achieve? whether it's that relationship or meeting this person or getting that promotion or whatever it might be that could potentially bring some type of rejection from it. But a lot of that, the most important piece of it is what's your why behind it? Why are you trying to go and accomplish or do or, or get this thing? Right. Mm -hmm. And that I believe has a lot to do with it too, is keeping up with the Joneses. Bob next door got a promotion. So now I got to compete with Bob. So I need to go get a promotion. But is that really what you want? Mm -hmm. right? right. And then when it doesn't happen, are you really hurt or now are you more embarrassed? Because now you got to go tell Bob, well, I didn't get the promotion. Right. So now you got that monkey on your shoulder that you don't want to deal with, too. So understanding where your why is, what, what's, what's truly motivating you is, is an important piece of it. Uh, the other thing I want to throw on and I'm going to come around, and have you guys share your thoughts. One is about identifying and some of the tools and techniques to help focus in on what your why may be, but also uh, I just use the term motivation. There is a definite difference. And I think this is another thing that people need to grasp onto. And Sean talked a lot about the people he listens to first thing in the morning, you know, to, to get his juices flowing and, and their message. But there is a difference between motivation and inspiration. And that is another thing that I think people get those two things confused or don't understand what, what the, the difference is, or there are some similarities, but there are some, some definite differences. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that too, just from a motivation versus inspiration standpoint, because in general, and this is a generality with it, motivation is temporary. You are motivated to do something and then that wanes and it falls off and now you need to be re-motivated. Maybe the same thing or a different direction, whatever it might be. Being inspired is limitless, right? So, and that, I think this is the biggest difference with that. So Chris, I'll come to you first. I want to hear you talk a little bit about your whys or understanding, getting to the root of why, and then what things drive that? Is it motivation 
or is it inspiration? So let's think about it from a job perspective. The key motivation is getting paid. Okay. That's your first, that's your first consideration. I want to get paid. If it's a personal relationship, typically it should be, I want to be loved. Now, for me, I've, I've, I'm evolving past that. I just want to get paid. I want to do something that ser- that's a fit and it serves me. We've talked about this and you and I have talked about this online in depth. And that is, a, those are two huge things for me now. I can get paid. That's not really an issue. But one of the things I've had to learn over the course of this last year and change is and really focus on what matters to me. And I say what matters to me. Am I underlining that till the paper has a rip in it? OK. Um, am I are all my talents going to be used? Are people going to recognize what I bring to the table? Um, is it going to be able to be? I don't necessarily need it to be acknowledged on a day in and day out basis, but occasionally I just, you, you, you need that occasional attaboy, right? Now we flip it over to the personal side of our, our lives. Now I want somebody to love me, but I also want to be able to love someone and then be able to, to accept that love because you can love somebody. That doesn't mean that they have the ability to love you back. Uh, and even now love such a, you know, it's such a broad scale thing. You have to be prepared to let people love you in the way that they love you, as opposed to the way you want them to love you. You have to be able, you have to be able to make that, that, that if, if, if there's a deal you're making, you have to be able to make that deal sometimes. And you also have to be able to grow into it. You know what I mean? It's just, you just don't all of a sudden come together. I love you. You love me. And it's all hunky dory. That's when actually the real work begins. So I'm, you know, I'm starting to identify those things in, in my, my life and my world. It's funny, I taught, I had to do a speech last night for this graduation ceremony, right? And I'm on this new thing now because I now have all these new tools that have been identified. My preparation is starting to, 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 to really, I'm ramping up my preparation. So I, ha- like I said, I, I spoke on this earlier. I have that ability to wing it. I can do it. I've been doing it my whole entire life. Has it served me well? No, it has served me, but it has not served me to the degree that I want it. Now I've all of a sudden identified that it's important to me. Now it's like, you have the ability to make this better. What are you going to do? That means I just need to put some prep time into it. So like I came home last night, it was late. I wanted to, I told, what did I tell you when I saw you on uh, Thursday? Send me over the synopsis so I can do my research because I'm, I'm short on time right now, but I want to, I want to do this the justice that it deserves because this is your platform and we love you for it and we want to help it grow. So I realize that if I'm going to do those things that I tell you that I'm going to do, then I actually need to put in a little more time into the thing and not just come in and think I'm, I'm Joe cool and I can make it happen. I can but the, re- the results are going to be mixed. Sometimes I'm going to, I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit it out of park, kind of like our golf game. Some days I can go out there and I can crack it. You know what I mean? And some days you're going to like, dude, you ever picked up a club before? <laughs> you, know what I mean? that's a, that's a, you get that look like, does this dude know how to play golf? So it's all the same things. You get out of it what you put into it. Your life. Nobody else's life is your life. So what you going to do? And that, that those these seminars really help to reinforce that, that A, the clock is always running, and B, you are the master of your own destiny and, no, and nobody else has, is in charge of you. And, and damn it, start living. You know, you know, we you know, we talk about that thing about, you know, and it's another one of those one of those sports analogies. I'm in the back nine of my life. You know, we're in the back nine. I'm trying to make up for those 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 ill advised strokes on the front nine. You know, those gaffes, those slices, you know, those water shots. I'm trying to make up for all of that right now. And I'm trying to do it happily. You know, that's the other part of it. And I'm trying to be happy while I do all this. You know, work is not easy. The things that we're required to do on a daily basis, a lot of times 
very challenging. The, we have the re, we're here to talk about rejection today. You're going to get rejected. You do, do, my history says I've always bounced back because I have that 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 built up resiliency piece in my program. But it's amazing how I discovered that I've been sleepwalking through life. I've literally, and I, I mean that's a deep admission for me. I'm like I've been sleepwalking through. I just been there was no plan. The plan was, eh, we just keep moving and hope for better days. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, you still, I still hope, but the reality is I put as much planning into it as possible. And I do, I do as much legwork as I can. And I try to affect, I can't count on all of you to affect the outcomes of my life. That's my responsibility. And if more people decided they were going to be responsible for their lives, they're going to be responsible for their dreams, be responsible for the, the outcomes of those things and responsible for their actions and the time that they put into their lives, we, this place would be a, would run a whole lot smoother. You'd have a whole lot more happier people. But unfortunately, people don't want to do that. They just don't. For whatever they don't. reason, they don't. Agreed. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and a lot of what you just talked about goes back to the word I said earlier, and that's just choice. You have now chosen to stop sleepwalking. And whatever that then means is what you're working through and working daily to get better at and be more focused to and be more prepared and, and, and everything else. But that was a choice that you made once you had that realization let me give you a quick said, you know, let me give you a quick thought on this it is yeah. now a catalyst for my happiness i like it i like it erica i want to come to you what will picking up where chris left off just talking about finding your why and motivation versus inspiration and, and all of that uh what are some of the things you have personally experienced or witnessed uh in, in your journey really for my inspiration it's really been just the day Day one is family. And I wish I could say it's just all inner, you know, my inner being. And it's it's not. It's what I love the most, what I treasure the most, family. Um, it is my spirituality. But really, the first thing that has actually inspired me and for me also motivated me was family. And out of that, just love just love for them. And then as I've grown older, just really focusing on loving myself more and spending a lot of time with me and valuing myself, learning how, and that, and that's, you know, I, I'll admit it hasn't been always easy for me to kind of put myself first and my feelings um, first. But I think that, you know, as we get older and you live a little and you experience, like we're talking about today, the rejection, it does uh, make a person stop and really do some self-evaluation and say, you know, I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be treated with kindness like I treat others with kindness. And I think it's taking out that time. That's what I would recommend to everyone is to realize that each of us deserves the kind of kindness and love that we give to other people. And we have to stop and ask ourselves, how come we don't treat ourselves with that same type of love and care that we give to others? So that's just something that I've had to learn and ex experience and learn for myself. And if I were to share any kind of tips to anyone, it, that would be the first one. So true about uh, over time, how, um, you know, family and career and all those things are important and will always be important at some level and to some degree, but that relationship with self and how that needs to evolve uh, is, is really a, a key piece of life. And that's the thing that helps um, find that balance, you know, and, and, uh, all of that harmony with within yourself and within your life. And it brings you back to what Chris was saying. That's probably where that source of happiness comes from is when you can find that harmony between those things and within yourself as well. Sean, what about you? Well, you know, Chris, I see you glowing over there, man. I see you. Chris is shining right now. I don't know if you know. 
Yeah. I know it's just a long yeah. time, so I know, you know, I like skin friends. You can tell their mood, but by, by, you know, <laughs> when they all in the spectrum here, Chris is just glowing like a light bulb over here, you know. And Chris, I'm like you. I like to be prepared for these things. So when I get a, a, a an alert, you know, I'm listening to different podcasts and just searching for things. And sometimes I'll send Brian little stuff, you know, in the meantime, as I come across little goodies. So he knows I'm, you know, I'm out here looking at different things. But when we're talking about motivation and, and inspiration and money specifically, you know, mo- the issue is to be successful, it, can, it can't be about the money. It, it just simply cannot, it can't be about the money you're, when you're finding your why, you know. So many of us have a, are trapped in a poor mindset because of the situation that we found ourselves rising through. And I said through, it's not attached to you. We have to, we have to let that go. We rose through, just like, you know, uh, a flower grows through the soil. It, it never becomes part of the soil, guys. You know, it eats the nutrients of the soil as it's going through it. But it's always been a plant. It's always been a rose from, from the time it went in there. Okay, so we, we got to rise through that. And so money, money can't be uh, a single motivation because money can't inspire it can inspire. You can say, oh, that guy is wealthy, has a lot of money, and so he can buy nice things and say, I'd like to do that, I'd like to have that. But it can't inspire you because inspiration is an alive thing. It's inside of you. And it's, it's an untapped well, you know. It, it, you can't touch it, you know. That, that's inspiration, you know. So money is finite, and finite things cannot inspire us. You know, what inspires you is a story about someone that survived the odds, right? Don't that deep feeling, that's inspiration. Money, because you can touch it. It's like, ah. You know, when I was in the army, I was in um, Iraq and Afghanistan, and I was giving out millions of dollars to the point that it was like, ah, what you, ah just giving about 500000 out today, you know. Like, I touched a million dollars and it had no effect on me. So money can't be a motivator. But an inspiration is saying, I love my family so much. I want to be able to sponsor my family on a cruise in the Caribbean. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'll find a way to find the money the resource, the finite thing to make that happen. But it isn't the money that's inspiring me to do that. It's the love for family, that untapped well of potential that we always get to dive in as far as we want to into love that's within us. We can ba- Look, the problem with love is that we think there's only a little bit of it. Oh, I got to find Keisha because I need some love. You know, we're looking... We're looking for love in all the wrong places. Love is already here. You can, man, you can sit in love and just stretch out, lean back. Ooh, I love to just bathe in it, you know? Let the water run in the shower and just, ooh, I'm just loving myself. Because you have an unlimited amount of love. Love of your family, love of what you provide to your community. That's what Chris is doing, the love of his community the love for the west side of, of Oahu. I understand that love because I love the west side of Oahu. So I know what you're feeling when you're out there with those kids and you're working with them and you're, and you're utilizing your story to motivate them. Your story is a finite thing. This is the thing you're carrying with you. You're using that, but it's your love that is driving them to graduate like they just did this past weekend. That's the inspiration and that's your difference. If you can touch it, it's, 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 not, it's not the real thing. Don't make me go into the religion part of that. But if you can touch it, it's not the real thing. The real thing is that thing you can't touch. And, you know, love was the greatest of these, right? What would be some of your final thoughts so that you want to leave our audience with as we step away today? So, so I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some next level stuff. I, I, I researched this a little bit. And uh, I, okay. I, the beautiful thing about this is, the where the where I I guess I'm kind of rewiring myself now 
it opens me up to learning some new things. You know, I, when we got a perfect example is when I, we, I got this subject, I was like, I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm like, and I'm trying to just go on the knowledge that I got prior to getting the, the synopsis. Right. So I, I had these ideas and I'm like, no, there has to be more to this. There just has to be more to this. So I got in and started banging around on a computer and I came up with some new stuff and I'm like, funny thing is some of it I knew, but it just reinforced it. So final thoughts, human beings are equipped with innate mechanisms that help them develop it and help them navigate challenges, including rejections. These mechanisms are evolutionary and psychological designed to aid survival and adaptability. One of the key mechanisms that I kind of, there's a, there's about seven of them. I don't, I don't know. We don't have time to go through all seven of them, but I'm going to hit the number one, one, which is near and dear to my heart. You've never heard me say this word before, and I don't know that you'll hear me say it again, but I'm going to say it. Neuroplasticity. This, the brain's adaptability. Basically the description of neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to recognize itself by to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections. This allows people to adapt to new situations, learn from their experiences and bounce back from challenges. When faced with rejection, the brain can recreate, can create new pathways that support resilience and creativity in their problem solving. The impact on this is that it enables to people to shift their perspectives, develop new skills, and find alternate solutions, turning setbacks into opportunities. Boom, bo voila, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's awesome, Chris. Thanks for sharing that. And I want to I want to jump on right on that train because I was just doing some, a little bit of research too, and not specific to this topic, but just learning and in general, especially about human nature, the, the mind and, and all those things and how we are wired. Uh, and very similar thing that came up talking about those newer pathways and these different things. And the subject I happened to be talking or looking at was talking about fear. You know, why do we have these irrational fears about so many different things in life? Fear of failure, fear of this, fear of that, right? And the scientist went back and he said, you have to look at our evolutionary journey as a species, human beings. He says, back when we were in a cave, fear was necessary. You had the tigers and this and that and whatever else was out there that literally wanted to eat you every day. And you had to go out and deal with that world because you had to hunt and forage. And that was the life. So we had this fear mechanism that that part of the brain that you just talked about created for us. Well, now we live in condos and houses and we drive cars and there's not a saber tooth tiger waiting to pounce on us at any moment. So that fear is no longer there. So, but because of our evolution, that those fear triggers are still within us. So we had to go f fill that bucket with other fears because it's now become part of our, how our brains work. So very interesting to, when you start to think about that and once you learn that, you can start to then say, okay, now I need to start to understand where those triggers are coming from and try to fill those buckets or really empty those buckets so you don't have those fears because a lot of those things that we are fearful of are only there because the neural pathways have been set. Now we have an opportunity to start to refine and reframe that in a, in a different way once you really understand it. So it is true. It is very true how our evolution has brought a lot of what we do as part of who we are day to day, even in the world we are today. We don't, again, don't have to worry about, you know, a tiger pouncing on us. If I lived in the middle of Africa, it might be different. But in general, civilized society, not a concern that we have. So it's, it's a very interesting thing. Erica, what about you? Final thoughts. What would you like to leave our audience with just from a better ways to continue to pick yourself up and push past rejection. It's easier said than done, but realize that 99% of the time, the rejection that uh, we perceive we're experiencing, it's not really about us. It's about things that we 
don't know anything about, mm -hmm. or it's really about the other uh, position, or it's about the other person. But we we are internalizing it because of something that we feel internally, but not anything that's actually happening from the external standpoint. We're not losing anything. Whatever we're supposed to have, whatever we're supposed to experience, we're going to have an experience in the time it's supposed to happen. You know, thanks for sharing that too. And it's funny because just tying it back to what I was just speaking of a fear, and I'll just use a simple example. We uh, we talk about obviously a, a dating situation. You know, you, we want to ask someone out on a date or whatever that looks like, and you get rejected, and how we take that in. But what we have to understand is maybe that individual turns you down out of a fear on their side that has nothing to do with you. Okay. You don't know what their life experiences have been with relationships. Maybe they have a fear of what it's going to take to be committed to a relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows, which has absolutely actually nothing to do with you. So it wasn't you that was reject that they were rejecting. It was a grander thing in their own mind that was what where the rejection was coming from but most times and sean uh, alluded to this very early in, in our episode today we want to make it about us mm -hmm. and most times it's actually not about us all right so i like what you said about fear you know and we all know that fear is you know something that we're placing a, too, a big deal on something that's not really there you know we're thinking of things that that aren't real you know, it's, it's, it's a false narrative. And I think of, you know, how we get in that situation. How do we, how do we get there? How do we get trapped in that, in that situation? Because as Erica said, you know, you don't have to worry in life about what you're going to get or what's good for you because everything is working out for your good. And you just have to believe that everything is, everything is going to work out for you. You're, you're, you're swimming downstream. Life is meant to be easy. I don't, I don't like when people talk about life as hard and it's, it's, uh, it's this. No, life is supposed to be this, you know, this great, you know, vibrant experience. And when you walk outside, that's what you see. You say, oh, look at these flowers. Look at the trees. Look at, oh, my God. It's great. And it's great to be here. So if you are having an issue with life itself, you have an issue with yourself because you don't understand your place, you know, and we create these fears around us. You know, we've, we've lost our lost our way. My mom used to say, you know, think of the what if, you know. And I always thought it was a great motto. It was something we lived by as, you know, as a family, like think of the what if. And she would, you know, punish you with it. Think of the what if. You shouldn't have done that. What if you had a fallen and broken your leg? What if the house had a burn down? What if, you know, and you start. And you think of the what if, and it's supposed to be a mechanism to make you not do certain decisions and make better decisions, you know, to be cautious, be careful. It's meant to be a good thing. In life, it can be very detrimental. And I'll tell you how. So our brain is a mechanism that's looking, it's searching, you know, and it's searching for a reason. That's one cause and it's to protect us. Our job is to protect us. So what is it doing? It's looking for the worst possible scenario. You know, the first thing you do when you step into the woods, you go, oh, shoot, there's probably a bear in here. <laughs> you know, I've been all through the woods, guys. Nothing scary out there. It's lonely. It's just stuff. It's woods and bugs and stuff. But we have a fear. We think of the worst case scenario. And so in our lives, we start thinking about, you know, the worst case scenario in everything we do. What's the worst thing this person's going to do to me? They're going to hurt me. They're going to cheat on me. They're going to, what the worst this job is going to do to me? I'm going to have a horrible boss. The hour's going to be really crappy. I'm going to hate the commute. What about this restaurant? Oh, the, the pasta's going to be dry. The salad's not going to be, you know, really crisp. We start looking for the worst and it becomes our, our character. We look for the worst in everything because we thought we were looking out for the what if. And so we've empowered our mind on, you know, hyperspeed looking for the wrong direction, right? We should be looking for the best. Look for the best in everything. What's the best that can happen within this relationship? What's the best that can happen on this job? What's the best I can do with this report that I'm writing right now? What's the best I can get out of this solitary action? Is this the best work I'm turning in? 
so that my job, my boss is going to be like, man, that Sean, I tell you, he knows his stuff. And I want them to think that this is the best thing I can do. And you start putting the best into everything. So we talked about self-discovery. I learned I was pretty slack. That was my punch in the face, Chris. I realized that I was slack. If I had to write a report for myself, which I did, great dude, kind of slack. And that's not what I want on my tombstone, is that, hey, sounds a great guy, but he doesn't really pull with the follow through, you know? So I started buckling myself down, holding myself accountable, making mental lists. And I fumbled, I failed, but I always kept falling forward better and better and better, holding myself accountable, okay? Start looking for the best in everything, the best out of myself, the best out of my surroundings. And you have to live with that. And then you start finding the silver linings because they're, all, they're also there as well. I had a buddy that um, when I was in the army, um, was gonna propose to his, uh, um, his then girlfriend, now wife. And you know, he had his ring on the, on the side table in his room. So he lived in you know, a little small bachelor pad and he can't find it. He's like, man, it was right there. I'm planning to propose. He had everything all set up. He's a real romantic guy. Just like me, I'm a, I'm a big romantic, can't help it. But he had his thing set up. Couldn't find the ring. There's only one, there was only one prime suspect, the dog. Yeah, <laughs> just, just like the rom-com, you know, I'm a big rom-com guy, just, the dog had eaten the ring, right? So, you know, you know what has to happen. You have to wait for it to pass, you know, it's normal way. But guess what? As that process happened, and he's got to dig through some uncomfortable stuff, he is not worried at all about the uncomfortable stuff that he's digging through because he knows there's $3,000 on the other side. So when we're looking at the clouds in our life and say, oh my goodness, that looks like a big cloud. Just understand that on the other side, if you just reach through that cloud, there's silver in there. And instead of saying, look at all these clouds, look at all this silver. This challenge that I'm about to go through, man, it's gonna be some money in there. It's going to come in some way, shape, or form. It's going to come cash in the bank. It's going to come become love in my life. It's going to come peace in my home. It's going to become I get the first parking spot that I want when I pull up to the store. It's going to be I get my favorite seat. I get my favorite meal. Everything starts showing up in your life because you say so. But you have to decide that I want the best things in my life. And life is going to direct you right into those best those next things. I don't think about it anymore because I know, oh, it's going to work out. It's going to be the best thing. And I try to shine that light and be that light every day. And when people say, what are you going to do today? You know, make a difference in someone's life. And I know that and you can radiate that just like Chris is being ra so radiant right now because he feels himself, you know, being an inspiration and moving through that community. His, his essence is moving through that community and they're inspired through him. You can do those same things in your life and you can sit back and watch the returns just flowing in because that is what abundant looks like. We have forgotten. We thought abundance meant money. No, money cannot be an inspiration. Money is a side effect. You know, you create the value in you and in your mind and then money comes as a side effect of that. But you are the thing that creates the money. So money, yeah, it's, it's gonna come, but what you're looking for in your life is everything going your way. You feel you're the luckiest person in the world. I got the best girl in the world. I got the best car in the world. I'm in the best neighborhood in the world. I, and everything in your life, you begin to have that Midas touch as you turn everything into gold in your mind. And as within, so without and vice versa. So you see gold in your mind, gold starts to show up out here in front of you and you feel blessed and you feel favored and you feel untouchable as you walk through life and then you share and you're that beacon of light because you started it inside yourself. I challenge everyone, find it, find your thing. I'm going to do this one thing today and I'm gonna be the best at it. And you're gonna to start to find that little mustard seed. It's just gonna grow and it's gonna blossom and you're gonna be the best at that. And you're gonna be the best at that. And those things are just gonna to start to multiply in your life until you're just shining like pure gold. And you know, and you have the self-esteem and understand your self-worth that we talked about on our last podcast. You're the reason people wanna come outside to play in the morning. 
let people want to come to the, the job to play with you, man, I get to play with Sean. He's so much fun. He's always inspirational. He's inspiring me with my, my, my wife and husband, inspiring me to eat better, inspiring me to do more in my community, and just inspiring me to be the best me I can be. That's what we want to do. That's how we turn tragedy into triumph is we show, hey, that was nothing. That was nothing. I'm the thing in the slingshot, now watch me fly, and I'm going to fly far. Don't hold back. Let, let go and go with it, and you'll find yourself, you know, soaring with the stars. Wow. That was powerful. Powerful yes. stuff, Sean. Absolutely. I should have wrote that down. Yeah. You should have. <laughs> yeah, we got to record you it. You can record you can it. Play it back. Hey, yeah, I, wanna, you're all good. I know we've kind of hit this thing, but I, I, I just want to I want to speak cool, go for it. right quick. Um, and I'll, I'll close on this. When they, they ask you when you go in these seminars, what what you want to accomplish? And I had two things that I really wanted to accomplish. And this is hard to say to begin with, but I managed to muster up the strength to do it. I said I wanted to stop. Um, I wanted to stop. Uh, I wanted to unlock all my potential because I know I know in my heart of hearts, I got a shit ton of it. And I wanted to stop being a relationship killer. Because I realized that I have killed every love relationship that I've had because of my inadequacies, because of my the abandonment issues that I possess. That in, but before the woman would leave me, I would do some I would do some stuff to drive her out, and then I ain't got to worry about it. And those are the two things that I really wanted to identify. I wanted to put them up on the board, write it out, so the world could see it, so I could see it, and then I could start to do something about it. And that's where we're operating for. That's the space we're operating out of today. And I'm every day I wake up. I am so happy to be alive. Even with the challenges that I'm facing every day, I got a new job. I got a, you know, I got some new, you know, I'm, I'm teaching. I'm it, it, the subject matter is difficult. There's so much in front of me that has its share of challenges, but the rewards are so will be so great if I put the time into it. And I'm there. I'm so present with that, right? You know, today. And I'm and I and I hope I don't lose it. You know, I, and I'm gonna do everything in my power not to lose it. Well, somebody I know is not gonna let you lose it, so don't worry about that. Oh, yeah, we. I got you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, as they say, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. So, Chris, thank you. That was uh, amazing that you shared that, and you know, especially building that courage to tackle those two issues right out of the gate. All right, Sean, anything else before we wrap up for today, sir? I, I am good. I am emotionally spent. Um, it was a time well had and well shared, and I'm going to pause there and reflect uh, and stay in this space for a little bit. Um, thanks for thanks for having me. We had a great talk today. Gentlemen, this was amazing. Uh, Erica had to jump off. She had a meeting to get to, but these are always enlightening, and I think our audience will get nothing but uh, and inspirational value out of what we shared today. And uh, until we do this again, as I always say out there, take care, take care of each other, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.